Hello and welcome back to this video series where we're looking at building an e-commerce platform in 25 days using Next.js, Netlify and Stripe. So this is day three uh, where we are going to continue learning some React uh, fundamentals and in this episode we're going to look at managing data within a component. So you'll see here I have our awesome application from, <laughs> from last video that is just rendering out my even newer app over and over and over again. And if I open up VS Code, we can see that uh, that information is put into this message component um, and then rendered out over and over and over again. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is just get rid of all of this. Uh, so we're just back to our uh, outer div and our header. So if we save that and head back over to our browser, uh, we should see that our even cooler app, ah, because I do not actually have my server running. So I'm just going to type npm start and then we should be back up and running and we shouldn't actually see anything because we've just, well, we've deleted all of our code. Uh, so we're gonna create a new component for this, which we're going to call button uh, with an uppercase B. And so we're actually going to need to create that. So we're gonna do an import statement here uh, for button and we're going to import that from dot slash components slash button, uh, which is a file that we now need to create. So if we have a look at our components folder, create a new file called button.js. And then in here, we are going to create a new component And from that component, we are just going to return a button that says, click me. And in order to import this into our app file, we need to make sure that we export default button. And when we save that, head back over to our uh, browser, we should see this click me button and we can click it over and over and over again. Nothing's going to happen, but you know, it's nice having a button and feeling like there's something interactive happening on our, on our app. Um, and again, if we head back to our app.js, we could render that button over and over and over again. And then we could head back to our browser and see that over and over and over again. We could click all of them individually. Uh, we can make a little cookie clicker game very easily, which would be so much fun. So let's delete those extra buttons and just go back to one button. Okay, so we want this button to remember how many times we've clicked it. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna make it a smart button and give it the the ability to remember things, which is a little bit scary if we uh, if we weren't gonna be very nice to our button. But we're gonna be very nice to our button uh, now that we know that it remembers things. Uh, so what we really want to do here is um, we want a new variable that is something like um, times clicked. And we want that to be set to zero. And then every time we click that button, we want to update it to one, two, three, four, and so on. And so we need to remember something. Um, and the way that we do that in React is we bring in uh, a hook called use state. And we're bringing that in from the React library. Um, and we need to use the curly brackets around this because we're just importing one part of React. So we're just importing the use state hook. So the way we declare a variable using this use state hook is we say const and then we use these weird square brackets to say uh, num of clicks and then um, so this is the name of our variable and then we need to name the function that we want to overwrite the value of that variable so we're going to say set num of clicks and then that is going to be equal to uh, us calling use state and then we can pass in a initial value that we want this this variable to be set to um, so in this case we haven't actually clicked the button so we're going to set it to zero and so we're calling the use state hook we're passing it the value zero and then it's going to give us back a variable which is num of clicks and then it's also going to give us back a function um, which we can use to override that value and if we console log out what num of clicks is equal to and then we head on over to our console and open up the terminal. Oh, sorry, open up our console. Head on over to our browser and open up our console. Uh, you'll see the value zero. And if we were to um, change that default value from zero to 10, for example, and then go back to our code, uh, we should see the value 10 printed out in the console. So let's set that back to zero because we want it to be zero when we, when we first uh, start our application. Um, but then every time we click, we want to uh, set reset the number of clicks to whatever it is plus one. Um, so the way we do that is we add uh, an event listener. So we say on click 
of this button, uh, we want to do something. So here we're going to say, uh, well, we want to call the handle click, handle click function. And then if we save that and have a look here, it's saying, well, I don't know what handle click is. Handle click is not defined. So let's define that function. So we're going to say const handle click is equal to an arrow function. And then we're just going to console log out clicked. And then we can get rid of this console log. And if we head back over to our browser and click a couple of times, you'll see we've got clicked. And then each time I click it, this number is going up by one. So that looks like it's wired up correctly, which is good. So now what we need to do is change uh, the value of num of clicks to be whatever it is currently plus one. So the way that we can do that is inside our function, we can say set num of clicks. So we can call that function and then we just need to pass it the value that we want to set it to. So that's going to be the current value of num of clicks plus one. So if we save that um, and head back to our browser, just so that we can see that something's actually happening, I'm just going to console log out uh, num of clicks. So we can see as that changes and I'm going to get rid of this clicked message. So now as we click, you'll see that this value is going up by one every single time. No matter how many times we click, it's just going to keep remembering that. And then if we refresh, it's going to go back to the, to the initial value of zero, and then we can keep clicking to increment it again. So you might be thinking, hang on, I only wrote console log once. I told it to log out the number of clicks, but this seems to be logging out every single time I click the button. But inside this function, I haven't told it to console log. So every time the value of num of clicks is being changed, this console log is being run again. And that's exactly what's happening. And so every single time uh, we change the value of num of clicks, uh, React knows that this value has changed and it knows that this component uses that value. And so it tells this component to re-render, which is going to run this function again. So every single time we call set num of clicks, it's going to re-render our component with the new value. But we can't really see that happening at the moment. And so why don't we change the text uh, from click me to being uh, num of clicks. So this will show the number. So anytime we use the uh, curly brackets within our markup, that's saying, all right, I want to, I know this this here is some, some HTML or some markup, but I want to access some JavaScript. So whenever you use the curly brackets, we're saying, all right, I want to access a value in JavaScript or I want to run a function in JavaScript or something like that. Um, so here we are just grabbing the value of num of clicks. And then we want to say in front of that, clicked and then a space. And so uh, inside our button, it should say clicked and then the amount of times that we've clicked it. So let's head over to our browser again. And you'll see here that it says clicked 14. And if we scroll down to the bottom of our uh, console window here, uh, the latest value was 14. And so every single time we click that, you'll see that it's updating our UI uh, and printing out to the console, but that's not important anymore. Uh, if we refresh, it'll go back to clicked zero and then every single time we click that button, it's going to update and tell us how many times it's been clicked. So that's awesome. Uh, but what if we wanted to have multiple buttons that could all retain their own state and tell us how many times each button had been clicked individually? Well, this is as simple as uh, what we did with the message in the first video. Um, so if we just duplicate button over and over and over again, and then we head back to our... Um, browser, you'll see that we have all of these buttons and a bunch of them have been clicked zero times. And so every single time we click one of those buttons, it's remembering its own version of that state. And so its state is encapsulated within its own instance of that React component. This is one of the things that makes React so awesome is that you can kind of encapsulate this state into these little blocks and then you can build up the blocks and build up your UI uh, from these different reusable components. And because this component now uh, contains all of the logic it needs to remember how many times it's been clicked, we could use this across multiple projects. If we had another project that had a requirement where we needed to know how many times a button had been clicked, uh, then we could easily just copy and paste that component over to our new project um, and render it as many times as we want. Great, that's everything that I wanted to go through in this video. In the next one, we're going to look at props, which is a way that we can pass state from one component to another component. I'll see you there.